we're on. We're we're starting. Okay, great. We're starting. Yeah. Okay. Um, and- All right. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna introduce and do. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to week 16 of College Talk Summer Series. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to um, wait for those of you to sign on and um, get on, get settled. Little housekeeping items, as always. Remember. Um, Q&A will um, be reserved for the end if any of the speakers or presenters are, some of them are going to have to leave early. So if they need to, all their contact information will be there for you to contact them and um, get a hold of them. Uh, and if you have Q&A throughout the presentation and it's a um, you know very pertinent question, um, one of us can answer it in the Q&A box. So remember, go into the Q&A box and not into the chat box so that everything can be in one area. Um, and today I'm excited. This is the this is the last of the series. So, but um, also I am so happy that I was able to provide all of these great universities today. Um, Gary B, who is on, who is going to say um, that we saved the best for last. I know he's going to say that. So University of Tennessee, University of New Mexico, and the University of New Hampshire. And they are all going to be presenting today um, on their university, the changes that have occurred, if there are any from COVID, and they're going to tell you about their great institutions, what they have to offer, and give you a little bit of information about their surrounding areas. So I'm, without further ado, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to pop right in here and move forward. So once again, the University of Tennessee from Knoxville, the University of New Mexico, and the University of New Hampshire. I am going to give um, the bios on our presenters, and then I'm going to hand it over um, to them to go ahead and give their presentation. So first off, I have Ashley Anderson. She's the Northern California Regional Representative at the University of Tennessee. Ashley is a native East Tennessean, Tennessean <laughs> from, um, is it Severville? It's called Sevierville. It's a tough one. It's, ooh, Sevierville. Yes. Okay. She now lives in Northern California, where she proudly represents the University of Tennessee. Ashley serves all students from Northern California, Alaska, Oregon, and Washington who are interested in learning about UT. She has worked in college admissions for 13 years in both private and public institutions, and Ashley has a passion for helping students and their families during this exciting time in their lives and talking about the admissions process. Ashley hopes to be able to connect with you at a high school visit or college fair in the near future when that is able to happen again in face-to-face -face contact. Please don't hesitate to reach out to her so she can learn more about you and talk to you about how you can apply to become a future bull. And we'll know what that stands for as soon as she presents. And then we have Gary, Gary B. I am not going to uh, pronounce, he will tell you, Gary B. Call him Gary B from the University of New Mexico. Gary is a distinguished alumnus and now staff at his alma mater. Gary is known for his ability to provide higher education information in an inter entertaining manner. Basically it's called infotainment. He has presented to several hundred audiences and guarantees you will learn, laugh, and love creating options in the college search. Finding the perfect college and how to pay for it with thousands of options available, deciding where to attend college can be a challenging task. However, this presentation that you will hear from Gary B, one of many higher education topics, will pave the road to the perfect choice and help families figure out how to pay the infotaining presentation covers in-state choices, out-of-state possibilities, the top reasons students choose a college, and the ver and various costs, financial and scholarship opportunities, including WUI. Um, and he will tell you all about WUI. And then last but not least, we have Nian, and I don't actually know how to pronounce her last name. Can someone pipe in for me? You're on, you're on mute, Ashley. Yeah, I was just shaking my head because I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. All right. She Well, she is going to join us a little later. Um, she is actually giving a presentation before and after. So she's getting us right in between. So she's going to pop in hopefully right around 5 or 5.15 and she's going to give hers. Really quick, she is the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions for the West Coast Region for the University of New Hampshire. With over nine years of experience, Nian is a higher education professional with a demonstrated history of working in recruitment, admissions, and support
Are we having some technical issues? Yeah. Are we, um, okay. I, there we my go. My screen froze, I believe. Okay. Are we all good now? I think. I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I'm we lost her. Whoops. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> Okay, so I assume she'll probably be restarting it and then, oh, there she is, there she is. Yeah, she'll be right back in. All right, I'm back. Are you guys there? Yes. We yes. are having obviously some internet issues. It happens. In the fires and the air conditioning and the heat, um, this is where we're at. So let's see, are we good here? How's that? Okay. That looks great. All right. Off you go, Ashley. Awesome. Thanks so much. Okay, guys. So um, again, my name is Ashley Anderson. Obviously, I represent the University of Tennessee. And as was mentioned during the um, bio, I am originally from East Tennessee. Now, I'm sure you're wondering that I attend the University of Tennessee. And I did not because like many of you, I really wanted to have an out of state experience. So I went off to school, but um, I actually went to uh, the neighboring, the bordering state of Virginia, but because I'm from East Tennessee and I grew up cheering on the University of Tennessee volunteers. And as you heard, we are called the balls for short. So that's where that comes from. Um, you know, I, I definitely have a big piece of my heart at the University of Tennessee. So I just love working for UT. I love sharing about opportunities at the University of Tennessee with California students. And we do have a lot of students from California that are attending UT. In fact, it's our sixth top sending state. Um, so I'm just excited to be here with you today to share with you a few quick facts about UT. Um, so next slide, perfect. Um, I want to talk, I want to highlight just a few things since this is going to be a bit of a condensed version of my normal presentation. And one of the things that I really want to drive home is just our incredible location. We are located in Knoxville, which is the third largest city in the state of Tennessee. And here you can see a map of where Tennessee is. Um, and then you'll see that Knoxville is located in the eastern part of the state. I love that we have the little airplane coming in because that highlights that we have an airport right in town. So it makes it really pretty easy to get to our campus. In fact, we're just about a 12 minute Uber drive from the airport. So um, nice and convenient, not bad at all. But going back to uh, our great location is Again, we're an urban campus. We're in a good sized city with a lot to do that translates into a lot of job opportunities for our students, a lot of internship opportunities for our students, great entertainment options. You have downtown Knoxville right in your backyard and here we have a great shot of downtown Knoxville. Um, our students are actually within walking distance to downtown. So it's just a great location. There's a great vibe. But then if you're the type of student that likes to get away from it all and you like outdoor adventure, then East Tennessee is a great place for you too. Because right in our backyard, just about a 45 to 50 minute drive from our campus, you have the most visited national park in the country, which is the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Um, so if you're the type of student that likes whitewater rafting, skiing, hiking, camping, you name it, you're going to find all of that um, in the Great Smoky Mountains. So I think it's a great location for those reasons. Now, another thing that I want to highlight is my beautiful virtual background right here, which unfortunately I'm kind of in front of our beautiful stadium there. But um, here you can see Neyland Stadium, which I would absolutely be remiss if I didn't talk about sports on our campus. So I will get to that in just a minute. But I wanna highlight just the natural beauty, not only of the mountains in our backyard, but right on our campus. So you'll see that right here, um, we have the Tennessee River, 
that goes through our campus. So it makes a beautiful backdrop to our campus. And one of my favorite fun facts about the University of Tennessee is that our stadium, Neyland Stadium, which my head again is right in front of, um, is we're one of only three Division I schools that our football stadium sits right on the water. So we are able to offer sailgating before our football games in addition to a great tailgating scene. Um, so that's just a fun fact, something I love. And, you know, I mentioned to you all that we're called the University of Tennessee Volunteers, the Vols for short. So we call um, all of the boats that gather together before our games, we call that our Vol Navy. So it's just a really fun environment um, to be a part of. Now I said I'm going to talk about sports, and so I'll quickly touch on that um, because this is a big part of our campus culture. So if any of you, and it's actually fine, it's it's fine to stay on this slide. It's it's good. I'll I'll stay a little bit longer here. So um, you know, if you're the type of student that you're looking for a school with um, you know, a lot of school spirit, you're looking for that camaraderie, sense of camaraderie with your fellow students, you want to go to football games and basketball games and be a part of the action, you're absolutely going to find that at the University of Tennessee. Um, football and basketball are the two sports that we see the biggest draws for, and especially for our football games, because like I mentioned, we have one of the largest football stadiums in the country. We see over 102,000 fans in Neyland Stadium. Um, we've seen some great football players come out of that program. Peyton Manning's one that you've probably heard of. Um, so it's not all about football on our campus, but that is a big part of our culture. Um, and let me tell you, there is nothing like being in Neyland Stadium on a game day with over like I said, 102,000 fans, everybody's decked out in their orange and white, everybody's singing Rocky Top together, which is our unofficial fight song, our adorable mascot Smokey, which is a blue tick coon hound. It's the, it's the state dog of Tennessee. He leads our football team out onto the field through our power T, which is formed by our marching band, the Pride of the Southland. You know, there's just, there's nothing like being a part of this environment. It's so much fun. So um, again, I would have been remiss to leave that out. So I wanted to talk about those things first. Now, moving on, and here's where we can go ahead and switch to the next slide. I'll talk about a few of those quick facts about the university. So we're a large institution. We have over 29,000 students on our campus. Um, here you'll see we have highlighted our undergraduate students. So we have over 23,000 at the undergraduate level. Because we are a large institution, that means that we have a lot of academic offerings. You'll see here we have over 360 different programs on campus. None of them are impacted. Um, and we'll talk in just a minute about some of the types of programs that we offer, but there's just about everything under the sun at the University of Tennessee. And you might think that at a large university like UT, you're going to have super large class sizes, and that's just not the case. First year, you probably will have some lecture style tech classes, so don't get me wrong, that will probably be part of your experience. But after the first year, the classes get much smaller. And in fact, your classes are probably going to be very similar to what you experience in high school. And our student to faculty ratio is 17 to 1, which is pretty great for a, for a school of our size. So moving on to the next slide. Um, like I mentioned, we have just about every major under the sun. Um, so there's a good chance that whatever you're looking for, we're going to have. Or if you're one of those students who, like I was when I was in high school, don't know what you want to study yet, that's perfectly fine. You can come in undecided. In fact, we welcome that. And at a later time, you can decide what you want to major in. Some of our top majors, because obviously I can't go through all six, three, uh, 360 plus majors, but some of our top majors is we see a lot of students coming to us for engineering. And we have just about every type of engineering um, from aerospace engineering to nuclear engineering, mechanical engineering, metallurgical, you name it. Um, 
We also have in our College of Agriculture a really popular program that's our animal science program. So if any of you are thinking about going on to vet school, which we do have a vet school on our campus, um, we do have animal science at the undergraduate level. A very unique program that we have that um, you're is probably going to stick with you because it just does stick with students because it's so interesting is that we have forensic anthropology on our campus and that's where students are studying the decomposition of human remains and yes we have a body farm on our campus so like i said that's a unique one um, some other ones that we see a lot of out-of-state students coming to us for are nursing um, we do have a direct entry nursing program, so talk to me about that one if you're interested in it. We have fantastic business programs that we're very well known for. Our supply chain management program is ranked third in the nation. So that's just a handful of our majors. Um, if you're interested in any of the others that I didn't mention, please go to our website or just reach out to me and we can schedule a Zoom call and talk about your particular major a little bit more in depth. Okay, so um, moving on, I'm quickly going to go over the application process and we were asked to talk about have we seen any changes because of COVID and oh my, we have seen so many changes at the University of Tennessee. So again, I'm going to try to go through this in a really concise manner because I certainly don't want to bore you and these slides are a little text heavy, so I'll just go over the main talking points. And then especially for those of you who are seniors, reach out to me and we'll talk about the details of any of these questions that you have. But um, first of all, I just want to touch on the fact that yes, we have decided to allow students to apply test optional this year. So it is perfectly fine if you do not have a test score or if you've taken the SAT or ACT, don't feel comfortable with your score, prefer not to send it, you're welcome to apply without that test score. Now what I will say about this is um, if you're kind of undecided in terms of if you want to apply with a test score or not, I would encourage you to go ahead and apply test optional because you can always make a change and say, you know what, I am going to send some test scores in and then send those into us at a later time. But you can't do the opposite. You can't say I'm applying with test scores and then you decide, you know what, I don't want them to look at those test scores. Unfortunately, there's no going back after you've decided that. So um, definitely something to keep in mind if you're trying to make that decision. And if you're not sure, I would lean towards applying test optional. Um, for those students who don't submit test scores, the application is basically going to be the same, except we're going to ask you to submit one additional essay. So we already have one required essay, and those are gonna be the common app prompts. You can choose one of them. Um, if you apply without test scores, we're going to ask you to submit an additional test optional essay where we ask you about leadership skills and then um, volunteer experiences that you have had. Um, other than those essays that I just mentioned, all students will either need to submit a $50 application fee or a waiver if they qualify. And then you'll also need to complete your self-reported academic record. I'm going to talk about that um, on one of the next slides here. And then obviously you'll need to submit your online application, which is pretty easy. So I'm going to run through this really quickly. In fact, I won't spend much time on this slide at all. But like I mentioned, if you are going test optional, you will need to submit an additional essay. So um, you'll be guided to that prompt once you're applying if you say you're not submitting scores. Um, next slide, please. So here I want to talk about our self-reported academic record. And basically this is just like it sounds. Um, we're asking students to now self-report their grades to us rather than submitting an official transcript. So this is actually going to make things a little bit easier on you. You no longer have to request the transcript. Um, we don't have to wait to receive the transcript in our office and then evaluate it to make a decision. We're simply going off of the information that you input um, to us. And then once a student is admitted before they enroll, they will have to submit an official final transcript to us. So at some point we'll need that, but that will come much further down the line. Um, the self-reported academic record is pretty self-explanatory. It should be pretty easy. 
But if you apply to the University of Tennessee and you're having any difficulty, just reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help. Okay, so um, really quickly, at the University of Tennessee, we do not take your GPA right off of your transcript. Instead, we recalculate your GPA based on a certain set of um, courses, and you will find them here. So um, we're going to take these courses into consideration, and we will give you additional quality points, as you will see at the bottom of the screen, if you've taken any honors courses, AP courses, IB, dual enrollment, etc. Um, now, I know what many of you are probably thinking, and that is, what if I don't have one of these uh, requirements? Does that mean that I'm not admissible to the University of Tennessee? What if I only have three years of, uh, let's say, English instead of four, which that's probably not the case, but we'll just throw that out there. Um, you know, if you're wondering, does that disqualify me for admission to the University of Tennessee? The answer is no. Um, these are the courses that we will calculate to come up with your core weighted GPA, but if you don't have one of these courses, it's not going to disqualify you from being admitted. It's just one course that won't be considered in that calculation, so it shouldn't hurt you too much. Um, but anytime we talk about the GPA at the University of Tennessee, be it for admission purposes or scholarship purposes, we are always referring to the UT core weighted GPA. So just remember that it's not the GPA on your transcript. Okay, so moving on to scholarships, I want to make sure to highlight that at UT, we are now considering students for scholarships, even if they don't have test scores. So that's great news. We're really excited about that. We have a set of scholarships for students who are submitting test scores. That's a grid. If you have this GPA and these test scores, this is where you line up, you know, ahead of time if you're getting a scholarship. And then we have another set of scholarships for students who are applying um, without test scores. So we'll go ahead and move on to talk about the cost. So um, obviously, unless there's something like, you know, you actually live in Tennessee or your parents live in Tennessee, the majority of you are probably going to be considered out of state students. And so you're going to want to look at our out of state tuition and fees and room and board. And so here we have packaged everything for you because we require students to live on campus that first year. So this total that you see here for out-of-state students, $43,540, um, that doesn't include any scholarships or financial aid. So your total amount is probably going to be less than that. Um, but also I want you to know that it's not just tuition and fees. This also is your housing for the first year and your meal plan. And I have to mention that the cost of living is so low in East Tennessee that that is also something that you'll want to factor in because let's say you decide to move off campus sophomore year, um, you know, that's certainly going to come into play because rent is going to be really, really low, um, most likely just expenses that you have when you go out to eat, when you go out with friends, I think you'll notice that things are a lot more affordable than in East Tennessee than they are here in California. And the median cost of a home is 149,000 in uh, Knoxville, which is pretty great compared to California housing prices. Okay, so moving on. Here, I'll want you to uh, focus on our out-of-state students. So these are the scholarships that I mentioned um, in terms of if you are submitting a test score and if you have a 3.8 core weighted GPA or higher, then this is our grid. So again, just look at the out of state students scholarship uh, amounts there and you will see that these scholarships are um, the, the first column is just for one year and the second column. Yeah, the second column is going to be your four year total. Um, so these are scholarships that are awarded each year of your undergraduate studies. Now, um, these Tennessee Explorer scholarships are also for out of state students. They're going to be a little bit lower. So you'll see that students who have a 3.6 core weighted GPA or higher um, can be considered for these if they fall into the uh, SAT or ACT ranges. 
So take a look at those. If you qualify and you apply by our deadline, then these are guaranteed. Um, there's no question of, you know, how many of these scholarships do you give out? You know, will I definitely qualify? If you meet the deadline, you have the test scores and you have the GPA, it's automatic. Okay, so moving on, I want to talk about our last um, set of scholarships, which is... Ashley, can I interrupt you for a yeah. second? Um, you said that the scholarships were going to be... Um, uh, evaluated without ACT or SAT, with, they would be also test optional. So does that uh, mean for the Tennessee Explorer Scholarship and the one No, that's so that's the next that's ones the that I'm getting slide. to. Okay, all right. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry I interrupted. No, sorry if I didn't make that clear. So these are the scholarships that are for students who are submitting test scores, um, as was the last slide. And then it should be this next slide, yes, the Beacon Scholarship. So, um, Again, you're going to want to look at the information for out of state students and students who have a 3.8 core weighted GPA or higher will be considered for our Beacon Scholarship. And the Beacon Scholarship amounts, they really range. You'll see 4,000 on the low end, that's going to be per year for the four years, all the way up to $18,000 per year for the four years. So if students have a 3.8, core weighted GPA or higher, they will be considered. Other than that, there's no guarantees. Unfortunately, this is not a grid setup like it would be with the, the test scores. So, um, you know, we're gonna have a selection committee that's looking at a lot of different things. Not only are they gonna be looking at GPA and the rigor of the courses that you've taken, but really your, your resume, your essays, how involved you've been, um, so there's a lot of different factors that are going to be taken into consideration for these. And, and I think the big question that I'm getting from a lot of students and parents is, well, what guarantees are there for these scholarships? And unfortunately, there's no guarantee. It's not that every single student with a 3.8 core weighted GPA or higher is going to get one of these scholarships, but they will be considered for these scholarships. Okay, so wrapping up here before I turn it over to Gary, um, quickly wanted to talk about um, our deadline. So um, November 2nd is what we call our early action admission application deadline. So this is not early decision. We are not locking you into anything at the University of Tennessee. So you always have until May 1st to decide whether or not you want to come to the University of Tennessee. But if you apply by November 2nd, that will make sure that you are in the running for all of our scholarships at the University of Tennessee and also our honors and scholars programs, which I didn't have a chance to talk about, but please follow up with me if you have any questions about those. Um, and then December 15th is our regular admission deadline. Just so you all know, our application is open. Um, we will be reviewing students' applications, I believe, starting next week. So it is certainly not too early to apply. Um, and then you'll see on the next slide that if you apply by our November 2nd deadline, you are going to have a decision release date of mid-December. So you are guaranteed to know by mid-December whether or not you are admitted to the University of Tennessee and also whether or not you qualified for one of those scholarships. So if submitting test scores, either the volunteer or the Explore scholarship, and if not submitting test scores, the Beacon scholarship. So that's when you'll find out if you're a recipient of one of those. Um, and I think that's all I have for you guys today because we have two other fantastic presenters coming up. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Gary and he is with the University of New Mexico, and I know he has a lot of great information to share with you guys. Fantastic. That was a great presentation. I learned a lot. I wanted to be a volunteer before that was done. So let me talk just for a few minutes about where I did attend college. Gary, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over the remote control to you. All right. Well, perfect. Okay. I'll take over here for just a few minutes. Do you have it? I'm jumping on there, I believe. Oh, you don't need to share your screen. Don't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time. 
You just need to click away. Click away. Yeah. Got it. All well, right. Fantastic. Make it make my life easy. What could be better? Talk about easy. We're going to talk about where I went to college, and it wasn't an easy process to get my degree, but I worked hard, and I know students, you're gonna work hard and you'll get your degree. Now, I started at the University of New Mexico in 1974 as a student. Uh, I told that to a group once and the student said, what? I said, I graduated last century, and then they said 100 years ago? No scholarship for that young guy. But anyhow, uh, I've been with the University of New Mexico for 46 years. I've had a couple of different jobs. And my favorite job is now helping students talk about the University of New Mexico and look at this opportunity. And so, students are looking to go to college. Lots of changes. We know that COVID changed things dramatically. When you started your junior year, you couldn't wait to be a senior. You woke up today and said, I cannot wait to be a, a, a freshman next year. And so we definitely want you to take the stress out of the process as we're thinking about college. And so I always say it's not a matter of if or when, but where. Look at all these options, and you can see where New Mexico is located, not that far from where we're located here in California. So I'm gonna talk about the University of New Mexico and how that can work for you. So remember three things, mountains, majors, money, and three letters, U and M. And I always ask students, what do you know about the University of New Mexico? And I always hear UNM, unfortunately not much. So let's start with location. UNM, university not close to mom. You're leaving home and going away to college. You'll be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I know the minute you hear Albuquerque, you're starting to think the desert, flat and hot. We're not, we're in the Rocky Mountains. So remember, UNM, university next to mountains. Being in the Rocky Mountains, the weather's gonna be a little different. Uh, if you liked it 114 over the weekend, you will not see that in Albuquerque. Today it was 88 degrees. Now there is a ski resort 20 minutes from the campus. A little bit of snow, there you go. And you're saying snow, UNM. Usually not much, but more than we get in the central coast, that's for sure. I'm not a fan of snow. Well, good, neither am I. It snows and it goes. Temperatures today, like I said, in the mid 80s in Albuquerque, which is about lateral to what you'd see on a typical day on the coast. I know I live in Ventura. This is exceptionally hot weather. Now, where's the university located? UNM, University near the middle. If you could take, um, let's say, all the communities in San Luis Obispo County and roll them into one big city, that would be Albuquerque, about 500,000 people. At the bottom here, you can see where the airport is. So you can fly out of Santa Maria, San Luis Obispo, I think has an airport. Um, you're landing right in Albuquerque, five minutes from campus. We're on Route 66. Many of you probably saw the movie Cars. And uh, there we are, yep, Route 66. Lots of fun things to do. Everybody knows what a fiesta is. That's a giant party. You wanna to go to college and have fun, think about the University of New Mexico. Yes, you're gonna study, you're gonna work hard. But we also know there's that social side. Uh, lower left, the Rio Grande River. So the university is nestled right between the Rocky Mountains and the Rio Grande. Old town, lots of fun things to do, great restaurants, great food, and the state capital is an hour away. You'd like to visit Santa Fe an hour away. That's what I say. Not a giant school, not a tiny school. I always say UNM, University of a nice medium size. Your average class is pretty typical of what you experienced in high school, about 30 students. Now this year, of course, it's much smaller because of the pandemic. We have 220 different degree programs and you're starting to think, wow, UNM. You name a major, I bet they have it. We are a research institute. And here you can see where this student got $988 a month, not only to study, but to work on a research project. So you're gonna get your opportunities for the academic hands-on learning and possibly even get paid to do that. As I said, 200 different academic programs. And maybe you're not quite sure what you're looking to do. Well, come 
and be one of the explorers. I always say UNM, University for Navigators like Magellan, will help you explore and find that major. Engineering, UNM, University from Nuclear to Mechanical. We are a tier one research. We build a Formula One race car. Look, we're not the best in the world. We finished number 11 out of 250. Eh, we'll get better. Come help us. Business, UNM, University with a number of management programs. Three out of four students had a paid internship, which means a job, during their college time. Architecture, UNM, day one, you're in the School of Architecture. And look at those studios. You'll have your own workspace, your own dedicated studio. Hey, Gary B., I'm into the health sciences. Well, UNM, University for Nursing and Medicine, the largest hospital in the state. Look at all these different options, athletic training, exercise science, pre-med, medical school, nursing, direct entry nursing, a six-year program, one year in pharmacy and six years in the pharmacy school. So you're graduating with the PharmD. There's the hospital that's on campus. You can walk from your dorm in five minutes and be on that hospital. There's a walkway, a bridgeway that goes across. Emergency medicine, uh, maybe you know that you, that's something that you like to deal with the trauma, uh, health trauma. And so again, dental hygiene, so many great options at UNM. Uh, me personally, I love doing some film. Uh, and today, Netflix is open their headquarters in Albuquerque. And so you're probably thinking, wow, UNM, University for Netflix Movies. That's right, come be part of that great program. Anything else? Psy, criminology, sociology, poli sci, history, econ, anthro, UNM, you need more? Hey, we'll open the door to help you explore. Just remember, UNM, UNM, undecided no more, come explore. Look, we have an honors college. Every student that's on this session today probably is because they're a high achiever and a hard worker. That's what we're, nobody ever came to me and said, hey, Gary B., can I get four years of lecture? No, let's get you into that honors college, small group discussion classes. I love that students know each other. It's 15 students and a professor talking about a subject. So you're not getting lectured. UNM, we're gonna make sure that when you graduate, that you've got the skills today so you're ready for tomorrow. So UNM, University for Now and Manana. Look, I wanted to have fun when I went to college. I was in many clubs and organizations. We're D1, we're in the Mountain West Conference. We play San Jose State, Fresno State, San Diego, UNLV. So I always say D1 fun and girls that can run. Yep, the national champs. Because of our elevation, our girls typically are finishing in the top five in the nation and two years running, we were the national champs. Study abroad, guess what? There you are, upper left. The classes are in English, the nights and weekends were in Italian. I also talk about student exchange. You can go to another college in America. I have many students that want to study marine biology. And you're thinking, UNM? University now for marine biology? That's correct. We partner with Monterey. So you can come to us, maybe even for a semester or two do research with our partner, Cal State Monterey Bay. What do you say? Trying to figure out where you're going to stay, UNM, University Nice as a Marriott, dining 24-7. Look at the uh, traditional halls. That one in the upper right, it's one student in that, but it's glamour time. We're talking about $600 a month to live on campus and about $600 a month for 24-7 dining. That works out to about $20 a day for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, jamba juice, coffee, you name it, we've got it, it's there. You're thinking UNM, unlimited number of meals, all day, every day, what do you say? 24 seven dining and ROTC. Uh, maybe you'd like to join into the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, come in as a student and graduate as an enlisted officer. We have options. As I mentioned and you heard earlier, we're going to talk just for a couple minutes about this WUI program. Students in California can go out of state to several other nearby states and pay reduced tuition. At New Mexico, 3.0 will show you the dough. Just remember, UNM, you need money, we've got scholarship. Students, the minute you've applied for admission, you've applied for scholarship. 
there's not a separate application. And if you've got a 3.9, you could be eligible for even more scholarship. Now let's take a look at the total cost to go to the University of New Mexico. For a student with a 3.0, you're looking between 20 and $23,000. OMG, oh my Gary B, that's crazy. Nope, that's a ton of dough to help you go to New Mexico. Students, you can apply any time. This is one of the simplest application and it couldn't be any lower cost. I'll pay your application fee. I don't want there to be a barrier. I want students to have opportunities. When it comes time next May to decide where you go to college, you're gonna remember where I applied, where I got admitted, and where I got some dough to help. All right, so I'm gonna just finish here quickly. Uh, students, there's no essay, there's no personal statement, there's no letters of recommendation. You apply online, it takes 20 minutes. At the end of the application, it's gonna say, uh, submit, boom, you hit that. And then it says pay now or pay later, click pay later. Then email me, Gary B, and I'll waive the fee. I'll email you back and say send your transcript. An unofficial transcript's fine. We don't need the ACT, we don't want the SAT. Now if you've taken them, certainly send them, that's great, they're not gonna hurt you. A student with a 990 is a guaranteed a $50,000 scholarship. You've got 1100, you got a guaranteed 60,000. No scholarship is not gonna get given because you didn't take the test. I'm gonna make this super simple. Class of 2021, time to get it done. You can apply online, do it anytime. Use your phone, do it at home. Either way, do it today. Then email me, Gary B, and I'll waive the fee. Send your transcript, don't worry about that test. I'll do the rest. Guess what? Don't be a fool, stay in school is cool. Go to college, gets nods. Gary B, remember me when you're making that list. UNM, university not to be missed. All right, you guys have probably had about all the Gary B you can handle today. And I think you're thinking, wow, UNM, unlimited number of meanings. Well, hopefully this meant something to you. Remember me, Gary B. All right. So now we're gonna go up next, Nian. Thank you, Gary. Wow, that's a big active follow for sure. <laughs> 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 well, there's my email. Thank you, Nan. All right. All you. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. And thank you again for the opportunity to share with you a little bit about the University of New Hampshire. Thank you, Nagla, for uh, putting this together. Um, so this is Nian Quach, and I am your admission counselor from the University of New Hampshire. So UNH is a public flagship research university. Um, we are you can go to the next slide for me. Um, we are located in Durham, New Hampshire, which is an hour north of Boston, an hour and a half from the majestic White Mountain and a short 20 minute from the Atlantic Ocean. Um, as you can see on the map here, we are literally in the middle of everything and with the largest transportation system in the state of New Hampshire, we'll make sure to get you where you need to go. Um, so next, if you could for me. Um, so we're currently sitting at around 13,000 undergraduate students. Um, so that make, that make us a mid-site institution. I'm sure you've heard a lot of, you know, a school and so a lot of school are calling itself mid-site. Um, so for UNH, as a mid-site institution of 13,000, we are able to offer you that resources, those opportunity and the school spirit um, that is, you know, of a division one um, university, you know, that tier one research university but at the same time still maintain that intimate personal connection to your faculty and your fellow student. Um, we are also uh, a geographically diverse university. We have students from all over the world as well as the country, including California. So there's plenty of new faces for you to meet. Um, and then with that said, um, 
you can go to the next slide for me. Um, so we're currently offering um, over 150 different majors uh, for students to choose from, and this is all direct entry, okay? None of our programs are impacted. Um, so we're talking liberal arts and humanities to business to engineering and physical science, um, all the way to the health sciences and human services. This include nursing as well as occupational therapy, and then the life sciences, um, which include biomedicals, as well as the pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental. Um, we are also one, um, if you can go to the next slide for me, okay, perfect. Um, so we are actually one of only 20 university in the country um, with the, what we call a land, sea, and space grant status, okay? Um, so for those of you who never heard of this before, what that means is that we receive funding from organization like NASA, as well as the Department of Defense to do research in all these different areas. Um, as you can see, this is a big part of who we are, and it's allowed us to attract these top tier uh, faculty as well as researcher um, is in the STEM field and beyond to come to UNH, who in turn then give you the best education possible. Um, we are, as like I said earlier, we are a tier one research university, um, and we're so proud to be that because it's only 131 university in the country with this classification, and we're proud to be one of them. Uh, but also, this allows you to be in the top 20% um, in the country when it's come to receiving research funding. Now, when you have that, um, when you paired it uh, with, Natalie, you, you mind going back for me? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, so when you pair that with, um, you know, different research center and institute on and around campus, as well as one of the oldest and largest undergraduate research program in the country, this means that students like yourself, when they come to the University of New Hampshire, can start taking advantage of all these different research opportunity. And again, STEM and beyond, starting sophomore year of your college career, uh, which is something that is very unique um, to, to UNH. Next slide for me. Um, and then just to kind of add on to another layer of what set your UNH academic apart is our study abroad program. It's a huge part of who we are. Um, one in four students at the University of New Hampshire study abroad at least once during their career. We have over 500 different programs um, abroad as well as around the country um, for students to choose from, 75 different countries to choose from. I know it's a strange time to talk about going abroad, but we believe that one day we will travel again. And some of the top destinations for our students are around Europe, as well as Asia and the Oceania. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's actually only six hours to fly from Boston to Paris, so very easy access. And um, students will get, you know, to be able, will be able to bring up their financial aid and merit scholarship when they study abroad. We have um, academic academic advisor who will work with you one-on-one -on -one directly to make sure that your credit are transferred back smoothly um, and the whole process is you are well supported throughout them and it's certainly encouraged that you um, study abroad or study away um, during your time at UNH. All right, last but not least, I uh, want to, I'm so proud to work for a university that incorporates sustainability into everything that we do. So from academic to research, from using, you know, landfill gas to heat our entire campus. And yes, you know, we are in New England, so it does get cold out there, um, to, you know, using um, to 100% renewable energy transportation system. And then I must mention that we have one of the best dining program in the country, and partly due to, you know, our organic, sustainable farming, um, you know, local produce in our dining hall. So as you can see, green is truly our favorite color, um, and it's something that we uh, we commit to. And 
UNH is actually um, a, one of the top three uh, platinum rated school when it comes to sustainability um, alongside um, another uh, California school, uh, Stanford. So we're pretty proud of that as well. Um, and then with that said, uh, I'm gonna transition into the uh, admission process. Um, so UNH is a common application or coalition application. We don't have a preference, whatever works best for you. Um, so when you fill out that application, we'll ask for background information, extracurricular activity, as well as the essay. Um, we only have required the one main essay from the common app, no supplemental essays. You don't have to worry about that for UNH. Um, we don't have, of course, ask for your transcript, we'll look at your courses and grade, and we require uh, one letter of recommendation. Our early action deadline, which is non-binding, is November 15th, and we also have a regular decision deadline of February 1st. Um, and we must talk about money, right? Um, so right now, we're looking at the, um, the cost of around $47,000 a year for students from California. This is thick of rice. Um, so what that means is that a lot of our students actually receive financial aid. Um, so for example, the so this is from the last um, class is about 82% of our students actually receive um, some form of financial aid. And we encourage all students to apply for the FAFSA, which is March 1st for UNH. And the cost um, is uh, of the double group and include meal plan. Um, so now I was mentioned a little bit about scholarships. So all California students are automatically get considered um, or review for scholarship through the admission process. No extra application are required. So you don't have to worry about applying um, for scholarships separately from the admission process. Um, we base the scholarship decision on academic academic achievement. Um, now keep in mind UNH is test optional. Um, so if you choose to not submit your SAT or ACC score, especially this year with COVID and how difficult it is to um, take those standardized tests, you don't have to worry about that um, with the University of New Hampshire um, and it will not impact the scholarship decision or the admission decision. Um, every year we give out around a hundred million um, dollar in grant and scholarship. So plenty to go around. Um, and then last but not least are my contact information. Um, so I'm, again, my name is Nian Quash and I work with all California students. So please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know if you are ready for an adventure in the beautiful New England while making a difference in the world that we're living in, we're certainly ready for you. Thank you. Wow, thank you everyone. I really appreciate it. Ashley had to hop off and I know Nian, you're gonna have to hop off soon and Gary, I know you also have another presentation. All of them have another presentation starting very soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run through my slides as quickly as possible. Again, this is week 16, so they've seen this all before, but just in case anyone still wants to get in on the masterclass, we are, um, September will be our fourth month and it's actually um, this Thursday. Um, remember, this is like a, a, an AP college admissions course. Um, you get to work with um, like-minded students and we focus on one aspect of the admissions puzzle um, during the 12-month uh, process. And um, I believe this week, um, I'm sorry, this month we are, uh, our, our focus is going to be on um, essays and supplementals. So working on that personal statement and the supplementals. Um, and then you also get to have access to um, the proprietary guided path tool, which allows you to uh, do guided searches and look at scholarships and admittance rates and all of that stuff. All of these things that the admissions people have been talking about. Um, and then two different types of comprehensive packages, one for the underclassmen and one for the upperclassmen. Both of them include all of the various um, aspects, interest profile, academic resume, education and career path um, ex exploration, when to ask those teachers and who to ask for letters of recommendations. Um, once again, working on college essays, um, financial planning for either FAFSA, CSS profile, or looking at all of those scholarship opportunities that are available at so many of the schools. Um, extracurricular and summer activities, and then looking at standardized prep. 
um, stand, a prep for standardized tests, um, which is really not a thing this year. Um, but we'll see if that, we'll see if the College Board and ACT ever recover from this, um, which should be interesting. Um, and so this is also the upperclassmen one. Here is everyone's contact information. I do see some questions in actually in the chat box there. Um, actually, no, those are from Gary. And giving um, rolling admissions, Gary is telling us that we are on rolling admission with a two week turnaround time to if you apply today. Um, and then you get to decide by next May. Um, and he has his email address in there. Uh, and so if you contact him directly, he will give you a free application. So you do not have to apply. And um, like I said, Ashley had to jump off, but her information is there on the screen. Ashley Anderson at Ashley Anderson, I'm sorry, Ashley Anderson at utk.edu. And then um, Gary B at unm.edu. And Nian, you have to tell me how you pronounce your last name properly. No, we're in Nagla. It's Quatch. So Nian.quatch at unh.edu. Excellent. Thank you. So I will say I had one question that came in. I believe it was from a parent. Um, this is a parent that um, has asked the same question in previous um, um, uh, sessions. But um, basically with the test optional and and some schools are being are test blind this admission season um what factor of the application do you see having a greater impact in the admissions decision that is such a great question and thank you for asking that i know for the university of new hampshire um, test score has never played the most significant role in the admission process um, we are a holistic review university so we look at everything um, and i would say you know with the removal of the standardized test score um, we're definitely putting um, emphasis as we always have on the you know transcript um, you know the courses that students are taking but also um, you know, extracurricular activities and, um, you know, essays and the, the counselor recommendation. Um, again, we are a holistic review, so that's always play a role. And we, this is actually not our first year of going test optional. Um, we have gone test optional prior to COVID, um, you know, just, just to become more accessible um, to all students. And so we um, will continue to, um, you know, uphold that practice of holistic review. Um, and yeah, transcript has always played a big role and it will continue to, so. Thank you, Nian. Gary? Students, parents, students, for three years, you've been in high school, working hard every day. Every college is gonna get your transcript and we're gonna see, did this student do the academic preparation for three years to be ready to be successful for the next four at our university. So every college that admits a student, that's what we're saying. You have the academic preparation to be successful and out the door in four. That's what our hope is. A test, it's one day at the plate. For three years, you've been there swinging, batting, working hard. So I always consider a student's GPA like a batting average. Here's three years working hard. And that one day at the plate for four hours, I know students, sometimes you think it can be a make or break. Well, if you've got a 1600 on the SAT and you're a 1.4 student, we're definitely gonna have a conversation. But if you're a 4.0 and you got a thousand, it may not be indicative of your capabilities because you're a perfect student and you get so nervous. So don't let that test be the factor. Every college, what did you study? How did you do? So the harder you work and your senior year counts too. And we love to see uh, progression. Uh, we know coming in as a freshman, you probably had a little bit of a challenge and sophomore you picked up the pace and you're junior year and even your senior year so we definitely want students to keep working because the rigor of college it's not going to slow down so test is fine if you didn't do it you're going to be perfect and new mexico forever has considered the test as an option if you've done it great if you haven't hey come on let's let's play we're ready 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you, Nian. Um, are there any questions from any of our attendees today? I am waiting here. So I've got, um, I've got a couple thank yous in there. Um, thank you all for sticking with this for 16 weeks and coming on and, and, um, and, and you know, participating and engaging with the um, reps that have given of their time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wait just in case anybody wants to ask any questions. Remember, the recordings will be up and ready to go. So if you missed a week or you can't remember an email address or it was like, oh, what did that person say about scholarships? Was it test optional? Wasn't it test optional? All these recordings are available to you. You can go on. You can rewatch them. You can pause them. You can rewind them. You can fast forward them. So you'll have the ability to do all of that. Um, so if any of the attendees have a question about a major, Nian and I can talk about how that major works. Um, you heard how I said direct entry nursing. Oftentimes students are concerned, if I want nursing, but am I able to get it? Uh, I don't want to go to college and never be able to do my nursing. I've got that passion. Well, some colleges direct entry in New Mexico day one high achieving students will know that they're going to be in the hospital after two years of doing classwork, two years of doing work in the hospital, uh, getting their hands on. So I know that's a, a very pioneer uh, nursing at New Hampshire. Direct entry. Absolutely. All right, that's yeah. excellent. So all three today were direct entry for nursing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that I have quite a few students actually looking at nursing. I have a couple that are actually looking at physician assistant. Um, do you guys have any um, information on that? Sure, I'll start with New Mexico. It's a master's program and I encourage students to come to New Mexico, get your undergrad, whether it's in the nursing or bio or anywhere, you need to build that foundation. Uh, we do have a medical school and we have what's called the pre-med society. Uh, students, I always say there's no dumb doctors. To get into medical school, you've got to get about a 95% minimum on the exam that's going to be head, get you into medical school. It's called the MCAT, the Medical College of Mission. And so, yeah, if you want to be a doctor, that's great. Maybe you want to be the person that actually tells the doctor what's going on, and that's that physician's assistant. <laughs> Come to New Mexico and work for us, work with us and become that PA. Uh, we'll take care of you, okay? <laughs> All awesome. right. Yeah, so, um, so as Gary said, it's a, you know, we have like a, a pre-med pre track and pre-PA. Um, so, it's, you know, you have to go to graduate school to become a physician assistant. So we be able to help students, um, you know, satisfy the prerequisite requirement. Um, we have, I don't have the exact uh, number at the top of my head, but I know that um, when I was last talked to our Dean of the College of Life Sciences and Agriculture, um, where a lot of our pre-med students are coming from, especially with the biomedical program, biochem program, uh, we have over 80% of our graduates that are accepted into um, medical schools uh, all across the country. So I was imagine very similar statistic with PA program. Um, and yeah, so a lot of research that hands-on learning um, and definitely no problem helping students satisfy that free right. Great, thank you. The other one that I get a lot of is engineering. So if you wanna talk about some of your, um, you know, larger engineering majors or the more popular ones, and if there is any extra requirements that they need for application there or anything different for the application process? Ian, why don't you start with this and then I'll dovetail in. Yeah, absolutely. I love talking about engineering because we actually have a College of Engineering and Physical Science um, at UNH. Ours is ABED accredited and it's actually one of the top program um, in New England. Uh, we have a huge partnership with NASA um, because of our mechanical engineering program, which has a aerospace engineering component. So a lot of students are, you know, interested in SpaceX is a big, you know, thing here in California. Uh, one of our graduate in May um, actually was, uh, is also one of SpaceX newest engineers. Happy to, you know, share more of his story um, and kind of how UNH helped him got there. Uh, but yeah, so mechanical engineering is uh, super popular for us, but 
We also have a wide variety of engineering program, including you know bioengineering, as you know civil, electrical, um, all the way to environmental engineering. So a lot of work on kind of helping address climate change, that sustainability piece that I mentioned earlier in my presentation. Um, you know, with all the wildfire that happening in California, if students are interested in learning, um, you know, like how environmental engineering could they use that knowledge of applying to um, addressing some of the more urgent issues that, you know, the state's facing that's, um, that we are a great option um, for those students. Thank you, Nian. And oh, and no, um, no separate, uh, same admission criteria. So. Excellent, excellent, yeah. thank uh, you. When a student applies to New Mexico, they can pick a major or they can come in undecided. If you choose engineering day one, you'll start as a freshman with some engineering classes. And you may not sure what kind of engineering do I wanna do? Um, <laughs> into nuclear, there's only a handful of colleges that have nuclear engineering. And there's even fewer that have a nuclear reactor. Hello, New Mexico. And so get the hands-on experience that you so desire. I talked about the mechanical engineering and building the Formula One race car. Students, it's not about building the car and being number 11 in the world and top tier. It's about building a team. What do engineers do? They work together. Uh, civil engineering, huge field. I know driverless cars are coming and the, the roads are going to change. The infrastructure, chemical engineering, big time. We, we're changing the infrastructure, but we're also changing the world with chemical engineering. Uh, if you're into that environmental engineering, I don't think there's a person today that doesn't think about global warming, especially after Sunday's debacle. Um, I don't have air conditioning. I live in Ventura. I was ready to buy whatever kind of engineering uh, I needed to get that AC going, man. So you come in. Now, let's talk about paying for college again. Some colleges have these things called partners. And guess who the partners are? The U.S. government, the Air Force Research Lab, Sandia National Lab, Intel's located in Albuquerque. And what do they do? They fund scholarships. Those are called departmental scholarships. So get your institutional aid and then come to New Mexico and let's stack on some departmental aid and get you to college in and out the door and four you're going to score. Gary B. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. Um, Gary is always, um, as you said, what, did, what was it that um, we said in the beginning? Make sure I use the correct terminology. Info. Infotainment. infotainment. It's infotainment with Gary. Always, always. Um, I tell this story and Gary knows it. I tell the story. I met Gary years ago when my own boys were um, in high school and I went to a college fair as a parent and uh, walked in and walked up to the table and, and Gary um, gave his presentation and my boys were absolutely floored. They, you know, that that's where I want to go to school. And we went and we toured and we liked it. They didn't end up going to school there, Gary, as you know. I know. But um, they, you know, the, the one thing I have to say, Gary gets students excited about college. I, and he, and he, you know, he gives his presentation about his school, but he's equal opportunity for everybody across the board. Um, and that, you know, that's the reason why he is one of the RAC members and he puts on all of these great presentations and, um, so I know that whether you end up wanting to go to University of New Mexico or University of New Hampshire or the University of Tennessee, whatever it may be, if you call Gary B, oh, I just made a rhyme, Gary. Did you hear that? If you call Gary B, I know that he will eventually get you to where you need to go again, once, whether it's with him or um, someone else. He has the resources. He's amazing. He's been a great mentor to me throughout the years. And I know I, every time I reach out to him, he, you know, he immediately replies, gives me information and helps me out and guides me in the right direction. I see Nian shaking her head. Yes, because I know that's what you feel also, right? Nian, he is, he is definitely one of those um, foundational pieces of higher education. Absolutely. Great way to, great description for Gary. Yeah. Well, I think the reason all three of us get up every day and do what we do mm -hmm. is future of the world sits across from us. Now, typically we're face to face. And today, while it's not face to face, we're still here to help you find the next place. Talk about rhyming all the time. And there you go. How about 
<laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. So we're going to go ahead and call it unless I see anything pop up really quickly. And then once again, Nian, thank you so much. Um, um, and we'll get, give you guys just a few minutes to re recoup and get on to your next presentation. So that way you have go to fix my hair and makeup and hope for the best. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So thank, thank you, you so much. Good. I appreciate it, Nian. Thanks. Thank you. See you All guys. right. Pleasure. Have a good one. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.